This is episode 224 of the e-commerce Coffee Break podcast. Today I'm joined by Carl O'Brien, co-founder of storehero.ai, and we will explore the concept of profit-first e-commerce and why it matters for your business. But before we get started, a big thank you to our sponsors for supporting today's episode. Storehero is a profit platform for e-commerce brands and agencies. Storehero helps centralize all of your e-commerce, marketing, and finance data to get a true sense of your unit economics, margins, and profitability. Visit storehero.ai today. This is the e-commerce coffee break. A top-rated Shopify growth podcast dedicated to Shopify merchants and business owners looking to grow their online stores. Learn how to survive in the fast-changing e-commerce world with your host, Klaus Lauter, and get marketing advice you can't find on Google. Welcome welcome, welcome to, to the, the show. show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce Coffee Break podcast. Today we want to talk about profit-first e-commerce and what that is. Now, a lot of merchants out there are working on a revenue basis and then they get a big shock at the end of the month when their accountant sends over the reports and then they see what the real profit is. So we want to dive a little bit deeper into that and how to avoid pitfalls and mistakes along the way. With me on the show today, I have Carl O'Brien. He's the co-founder of Store Hero at storehero.ai, a profit-focused analytics tool for e-commerce store owners. Carl previously founded Effector, a web and digital marketing agency based in Dublin in Ireland. Let's say hello to Carl. Hi, Carl. How are you today? Thanks. How are you? Thanks a lot for taking the time. Uh, delighted to be here talking today. Carl, you're coming from the side of running a web and digital marketing agency. So you have worked with a lot of brands and probably saw a lot of pitfalls that they were running in when it came to profitability, to revenue, to reports, analytics, and all of that. I think from there, you started with the idea of Store Hero. Give me a bit of an idea. How did Store Hero start it? Sure. So I started Vector, a digital marketing agency out of college. And I suppose with that, we worked with e-commerce brands in the context of web and ongoing uh, web development, but also ongoing digital marketing, paid social and advertising more broadly. So it was a great learning curve for me personally. And I know for our team, as it gives you an opportunity in order to get experience in numerous different industries and disciplines within e-commerce. So it allowed us to understand what the differences are, what the nuances are between different businesses, but also the, certainly the universality in, in e-commerce as well. We're all typically operating on a relatively similar tech stack. We've maybe some similar problems, but also similar opportunities. So as you said, that's really where the idea of, of Store Hero came about. Personally, in the agency, with the intention of maximizing the efficiency of our own team and growing their own business, I was always looking to try to find tech-enabled solutions to increase our own, to improve our own service. And marketing reporting and efficiency of actually getting that data in one place was always a big part of that. Now, ultimately, having tried various tools that was available at the time, it was, again, a very focused on marketing data itself, but there was a couple of pitfalls there. So the platforms weren't necessarily e-commerce specific. So it was ultimately giving a sea of numbers, but not necessarily helping understand which ones were most important. And it also told us what happened, but not necessarily what to do about it. So we definitely saw a gap there whereby it still involved that kind of interpretation layer and didn't really set out a methodology as to what growth looks like in the context of e-commerce. One other big portion that we saw with clients was ultimately those reports were formatted in such a way that there might be a PDF export that a client that we would work with was waiting for an agency or somebody with some more expertise in order to interpret that, provide that maybe on a weekly or fortnightly basis. And that's ultimately the same challenge a lot of e-commerce teams have. They maybe center their work around a Monday marketing meeting, let's say. Their time is spent in terms of aggregating the data. And I suppose that the key challenge I saw on the agency side was it missed a critical step in the process, which was profitability. As an agency, we were only getting a certain portion of the puzzle. And with that, we're making decisions with revenue in mind instead of profit. It's the same thing my colleague and co-founder, Thomas, from Store Hero, also saw working directly with brands in Shopify as a merchant success manager, a consultant for those plus brands. So ultimately, it's the same challenge again, a lot of individual marketing teams would have. They're operating through the lens of revenue, but at the end of the day, the standard of profitability is the standard by which the business owners and shareholders are are holding them, them to account. It makes perfect sense. You see always all over the internet, the seven, eight, nine figure 
business e-commerce store, but they're all talking about revenue and what they're really making on money at the end is really the big question. Now, you said with Store Hero, you have developed a system that not only shows you the data, but also points you in the right direction. How does that work? Sure. So really what it is from our perspective, we wanted to be very clear in defining a methodology around profit first e-commerce. So really not just giving brands a sea of numbers, but giving them a reference point or a blueprint, not to the extent where every, you're ma waving a magic wand, but a practical beneficial tool in order to help brands run the day-to-day -day more effectively. And with that, so I was really building on top of some of the challenges, maybe that some of those other reporting tools that we saw had. So they'd have different formats of aggregating maybe the sales and marketing data, but it was missing that crucial element of profitability. So ultimately what Store Hero is, is a profit first e-commerce analytics tool, which not only inputs that sales and marketing data in real time, connects directly into those channels, but also allows you to input those product level costs, your core product costs, packing, shipping, fulfillment. There's other things like taxes and transaction fees we can pull directly from each channel. You might want to add in things like agencies, software expenses, operational expenses, staff costs. And what that allows you to do is get a view of your profitability um, across any profit metric you want to use, whether it's net profit or contribution margin on a store level, on a product level, or also on an order level as well. So really understanding what's working in order to do more of it and ultimately pull back and do less of what isn't. How do you address the different departments within a business? Profitability might look different to a marketeer who is interested, sure. obviously, in profitability of, I don't know, ad spend and all of that, than someone who is on the accounting side of things. How does that work? Yeah, definitely. And it's an interesting point because it's something we've seen consistently around where the different stakeholders within organizations gravitated towards Store Hero. We see ourselves sitting in the middle between the that kind of marketing function and the finance function. Ultimately, marketing in reality, in the context of e-commerce, e-commerce is predicated on those marketing metrics. And that's what they're using and then teams are using on a day-to-day -day basis in order to give it themselves an indicator of success. And oftentimes that doesn't necessarily match the same kind of metrics, success metrics that the finance team are maybe using in order to give themselves an indicator of success. So what we've done with Store Hero is allowed a user to really go from that kind of top line, kind of total sales metric, right the way down to bottom line net profit. And really contribution margin is the area that we see as a metric that helps balance those two areas of the business. The marketing team, for example, doesn't necessarily have control or context on the operational expense of the business. But as compared to driving revenue, if they can use contribution margin, which again, for the benefit of, of anyone watching, with a lot of these metrics, there could be different definitions by different teams and different people in e-commerce. So really what we're looking to de define there with, with contribution margin is gross profit after not only our product costs, but any of those variable expenses, shipping, packing, fulfillment, taxes, transaction fees, but critically also factoring in that marketing cost, both direct advertising spend, but also any other associated marketing costs like agency fees and because it can be as direct as possible in terms of what you actually include in that metric. But in reality, it's going to give you a much better indication of how much are we actually generating in form of a margin or a profit off the back of every order. And even in businesses where there's a really solid set of unit economics there, there's solid gross margins, there's low product costs. Realistically, that CPA that sits in the center is going to be a massive variable that can really dictate whether a brand is probable or not. And I suppose that's something we've seen over the last number of years as the cost per acquisition and cost to acquire customers has risen. It's ultimately meant there's a lot of businesses there who don't understand or don't have the capacity to see that maybe they might be unprofitable on an order level, especially for a good chunk of their orders. It's easily done by nature of the fact that it's so difficult to get an understanding of that order level profitability from all those different variable expenses that I mentioned. To back to your question, ultimately, if that contribution margin, it can be the centerpiece and the holy grail that we use as a reference point. It can help bridge the gap between marketing and finance and also be a, it's a, still a proactive metric that both teams can use in order to drive the business forward. A lot of shops, online stores carry a lot of SKUs, a lot of products around. Right. And there might be products that are hidden cash cows and there might be some that are just unprofitable. How does your system help in, in finding these? And now a quick break to thank the sponsors of today's episode. 
Store Hero is a profit platform for e-commerce brands and agencies. Store Hero helps centralize all of your e-commerce, marketing and finance data to get a true sense of your unit economics, margins and profitability. Store Hero helps busy brand owners and agencies save up to 10 hours per week in managing their e-commerce business. Store Hero helps brands to get a razor sharp view of their contribution margins and give them the tools and confidence to build a profitable and sustainable business. Log in at storehero.ai and start making profitable decisions today. And now back to the show. Sure. So ultimately, as well as seeing that overarching store overview piece, we also allow brands and businesses to dive in on both a product or an order level. On a product basis, this can be really important, not only to see an extended version of maybe a unit sales report that you might be familiar with seeing in, in Shopify. But again, the critical challenge there is that it's only representing your landed product cost in the form of a gross profit. It's not including any of those other variable expenses and particularly not your advertising spend. So the intention there is on our product screen, you can understand the profitability of each product, how much each of those products are contributing towards your overall contribution margin or gross profit. Um, but as well, we can also determine what your break-even point ROAS is for each of those products. It's often a sliding scale or a, a moving target in terms of understanding what success looks like in terms of ROAS. But on a product level, because those margins are different, we can understand, okay, not only what's actually driving profitability when it comes to what's contributing towards contribution margin, but also then as well, what products are best set up to support digital advertising. They have solid margins. There's good average order value there in order to mean that we have an opportunity for success. The same concept also applies there in the context of our order screen. So on an order level, we can also not only understand the unit economics of each product within that order, but any of those order level expenses like taxes, fulfillment, uh, transaction fees. So by understanding those, we're not only able to see what are the orders that are best contributing towards our uh, gross profit, which are the orders with the largest margin, but often maybe more importantly, what are the situations in which we're leaking margin? So there might be a perfect storm there of particular orders that may have a free shipping threshold in which that maybe customer isn't uh, covering the, the cost of that shipping. Maybe it's a single product purchase. Maybe it, for a low margin product, maybe it's as a welcome 10 discount. There's an advertising cost associated with it. So all these components can add, add together and you can really, with Story or identify what are the situations that I want to elicit more sales from or generate more sales. And what are those edge cases that in reality are taking away from my hard work and, and, and driving profitability in my business? I think there's a lot of moving elements in every business and it's easy yeah. to fall into the trap to just oversee something. Now we're going slowly into Q4. Obviously that's the biggest quarter in the year when people sell the most. If you want to look into your numbers now and you start using Store Hero, how does the process work? Can I import my data that I already have or what's the process? Sure. So with Store Hero, once you sign up, you go through a simple onboarding process, connect your marketing channels, your sales channels, and with that set your kind of product level costs. With that, we can get a historic report on your store to date and understand your profitability for last year, let's say. So comparing any particular time period against the previous period or the previous year. So that's, again, particularly beneficial for you know, seasonal peaks like Q4. And ultimately, that approach is going to be slightly different for different types of businesses, depending on what their overarching goals are. Now, one thing we consistently see there is that Q4, naturally, with so many different things happening in the business, can be a real time of kind of heads down. We get to work and it's only really in January and February sometimes where we come up for air and understand what actually happened. Did our work, did our efforts actually contribute towards profitability? So getting ahead of that and being very disciplined in terms of defining your strategies, not based on sales, but based on profit, it's ultimately going to mean that you're not getting any surprises in, in Q1 2024. So maybe to touch on some of the specific pitfalls we often see with that. One is maybe not having a clear goal as to what you want to out of Q4. And as I mentioned, that's going to be different for different types of businesses. For some, it's going to be a case of maximizing customer acquisition. And on that basis, we might be willing to accept a higher CPA with the knowledge that we're growing our customer base and we can recoup that margin in the form of repeat purchases. Now, realistically, that's not a given. It's important to make sure we're acquiring customers that are likely to come back again and again. And discounting is one strategy there that there can be pros and cons associated with that. Not only are we eating into our profitability margin in the short term, but the types of customers that are maybe purchasing on a discount may not necessarily be the customers who come back to us. So there's also some other types of strategies you might have. 
you may be focusing on clearing inventory, for example. So again, that's a situation in which whatever we look at in the form of our cost per acquisition, you have a perishable good or you have a certain level of stock that you need to get out there by a certain time period. And in reality, that needs to dictate the, the process to a certain extent. Or alternatively, you may be, again, maximizing contribution margin or net profit margin, maybe the immediate goal. And therefore, you want to be a lot more maybe conservative in terms of, uh, or limited in terms of what you're looking to spend when it comes to cost per acquisition. So understanding what the goal is and making decisions on that basis will be one thing. Now, from there, once you define what that overarching objective should be, it should be really a case of setting some guardrails. So again, what am I willing to spend? And it's require a new customer as compared to my broader CPA. So with Store Hero, we look at this on a kind of an overarching basis, not just what the platform is reporting. So how many new customers are you acquiring and what was the cost to acquire them? And what was your overarching CPA for the business, not just your core advertising channels? So again, that's going to really include not only your core ad spend, but any other marketing costs, software subscriptions, and a real much better indication of what that is. From there as well, you might want to set a, a contribution margin goal. Ultimately, what's the level of kind of a margin you want to generate on a per order basis on over want to generate overall firm orders. I suppose the main thing you need to keep in mind there is as long as that any contribution margin is above your operational expenses, then you're in profit. So having a clear idea of those two numbers can be a big benefit. And one metric that is part of the Store Hero platform that we often recommend users pin to their dashboard. And by doing that, they also get access to it in their daily, weekly, or monthly email reports. That metric is new customer contribution margin. So understanding what was the margin we earned on new, on any orders from new customers, even after we factor in our advertising spend and all those various marketing costs. So again, if that number is positive, we're really comprehensively first order profitable. And as long as we can focus on retention and we've acquired the right customers, we're in a good place to, to grow that relationship over time. Oh, Carl, you got, just gave us a, a masterclass on things that a lot of merchants are missing out. I just want to highlight a few and I, I would recommend out to our listeners to listen to this twice because there's so much good stuff in there. Obviously, the first thing is don't do too much discounting. And now you highlighted that is that you train customers and properly you attract the wrong customers in coming with discounts and that on the customer lifetime experience, they're normally not returning customers. So that's a, a golden nugget, really, really good. And then also knowing what your net profit is. I think that's very important. A lot of people are just focusing too, too much on specifically marketeers. And I'm a marketeer, so I'm, I'm a victim of that myself. But you, you just look on Google ads or Facebook meta ads, and then you do your calculation in your head. And it's completely wrong because all the other costs um, should be in the calculation. What I like is that you get that you provide email reports. Because it's easy to forget to go into a system and check if you get an email report, it's right into your face and you have to read that. Now, how does the onboarding process work? Sure. So ultimately, it's going to differentiate getting set up, getting all your data in there as easy as possible. That all happens within that onboarding process. So typically what will happen there is you'll connect your marketing channels. Those marketing channels, again, whether it's SEO, analytics, paid advertising, email, will sync through and you can see that data straight away pulling that in real time from all your various marketing channels. Your store data will then sync through within a couple of hours, depending on the size of your store. And with that, again, we're going to automatically input any of those key expenses. So your product cost, if set within Shopify, and um, it'll automatically pull through. We also support WooCommerce, BigCommerce, Magento as well. And then from there, it will also pull in a couple of other automated expenses, whether it's your advertising spend, whether it's your taxes, whether it's your transaction fees, whether it's your shipping charged, how much uh, shipping you've charged customers. From there, as part of the onboarding process, we jump on a quick call and really try to support merchants signing up to make sure they're actually getting full value of the platform by making a couple of initial changes that will really help the experience long term. So again, ask them not only your shipping cost charged to the customer, but what's that cost incurred? Is there a delta there? And we're a free shipping threshold in which we need to take that situation into account. Again, maybe it's key staff costs, agency fees, stuff like that, that's going to really drive that contribution margin. So typically that onboarding process takes place over 20 to 30 minutes on a call. Um, it may be a case where it's really what you put in, you get back out from there. While it's extremely straightforward to get through your contribution point, you may have to put in maybe an hour or two in terms of getting your operational expenses in there. Now, we've ultimately designed the platform in a way that contribution margin is our goal. Some users decide not to actually go to the operational expense level, 
but the ones that do really see the benefit of it, because as part of our P&L view, you're getting a real comprehensive look at the health of the business. Who's your perfect customer? What kind of size or industry vertical? Sure. So we actually have been lucky enough to uh, onboard quite a range of a variety of customers. I think both in terms of size, geography and, and channels. Ultimately, as I mentioned before, even globally, we can use users across both, you know, the UK and Ireland, the US, Australia, everyone's operating on a relatively similar tech stack, has the same underlying challenges. So with that, anything over you know, 200K in annual revenue, up to maybe 10 to 15 million, we've seen benefits in, in, that, that the platform is beneficial in that regard. Our sweet spot for RANS is anywhere between maybe 300K to about 3 million. With that, there's a certain level of complexity that's been introduced within the business. And as those additional costs have moved past maybe a one-person operator, there's even more of a need in order to double down. Especially we've seen interesting businesses, direct-to-consumer businesses who have actually reached even higher levels of scale with a relatively simple or less complex stack. So that's the situation in which we're really serving brands a bit bigger, but that would definitely be our sweet spot. Okay. What's your pricing structure? How does that work? Sure. So store here was tiered based on the annual store revenue. So ultimately that might range from $129 a month, $12.99 per month, depending on each of those kind of a number of different pricing bands. Now ultimately, because we're holding ourselves to the standard of profitability, we ultimately are in the firing line to make sure we're proving our value and we're happy with that and actually ensure we bring people through the process as we're giving that level of expertise and education that sits on top of the platform, not only to make the most of the platform, but actually help achieve those kind of profitability goals. So that's definitely one piece we make sure to include within the ongoing subscription. By holding ourselves at our profitability standard, we want to make it a no-brainer for brands. So in most situations, a couple of additional orders whereby they can better utilize their advertising spend a lot more efficiently or understand those situations in which we have kind of margin leaking is a very quick indication that we're playing for the platform within the first couple of weeks. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer. I'm, I'm sure there's pretty much every business out there has some leaks that can be filled and will contribute to be more profitable immediately. Before we come to the end of our coffee break today, Carl, what's the one final thought that you would leave our listeners with? Any merchant, retailer, agency that's maybe supporting e-commerce businesses should really look at defining what that contribution margin goal is. Everyone's busy. And again, as we said, there's plenty of vanity metrics that can be used in order to indicate the health of your business. But in reality, setting a clear goal as to what's it actually worth to put in the long days and, and long nights and um, defining that number and really building your plan off the back of that would be something that we'd really stress at moving into Q4. So to any brands that are looking to do that, we'd be more than happy to talk to them and, and hopefully show them how story or can help. Okay. On that note, where can people find out more about you guys? Sure. So if you log on to storehero.ai uh, or email us, uh, hello at storehero.ai as well. Okay. I will put the links in the show notes and you just one click away. Carl, obviously profit first makes merchants sleep much better than revenue first. And I think Storehero sure. AI is a good tool to help with that. Thanks so much for your time today. Thanks a lot. Great to be here. Before you leave, don't forget to visit the sponsor of today's episode. Storehero is a profit platform for e-commerce brands and agencies. Storehero helps centralize all of your e-commerce, marketing, and finance data to get a true sense of your unit economics, margins, and profitability. Visit storehero.ai today. Hey, Klaus here. Before you go, I would like to invite you to become part of the e-commerce Merchant Pro community to get actionable advice from other Shopify merchants who already have achieved what you are aiming for. Our community is a safe place to actively grow your online retail business with the support of the most amazing and helpful group of e-commerce entrepreneurs behind you. Running a Shopify business is tough. Don't do it alone. Join us now. You will find the link in the show notes. Also, if you think your online store has conversion or marketing issues and you would like to have a fresh set of eyes on your business, then drop me an email at klaus at klauslauter.com and let me know a little bit about your business. It might be beneficial for you to have me look over your store, offers, emails, and ads, and get an unbiased outside perspective and guidance to help you make most of your online business. Thank you, as always, for tuning in today. I appreciate you. Until next time, and I talk to you soon.